some areas of study require more heavy lifting than others. And we mean literally. Corallines, or coralline algae, are a type of red seaweed that form the foundation of many shallow marine ecosystems. But the thing is, you probably don't even realize they're there. Although sometimes they form segmented branching arms like these, they often resemble a wad of old gum on a rock. We take corallines for granted, but without them, rocky reefs would be far less colorful. And they're not just for show. If you look closely, these corallines provide critical habitat for a range of tiny critters like baby shellfish, snails, urchins, and even other seaweeds. Researchers have shown that they host bacteria or contain chemicals that give off a scent that actually attracts other creatures to land on them. And that coralline species smell different, even though they often look similar. Because of this, researcher Brenton Twist believes corallines may play a critical role in restoring vanishing kelp forests that have drastically disappeared in recent years. Over the course of his experiment, Brenton will compare which flat, crusty corallines grow in shaded kelp forests versus in urchin barrens, where some corallines resist the relentless grazing of these ravenous creatures. But to study this unassuming foundation species means we have to work with the rocks they grow on. Brenton has selected certain coralline encrusted boulders around our Calvert Island Ecological Observatory to monitor over the course of this experiment. With the help of our dive technicians, they fill lift bags with air from the diver's tanks to carefully raise these boulders out of the water and then haul them onto the boat. Hence the heavy lifting. To set up his experiment, Breton marks out quadrat zones on the boulders and built a custom camera frame to take photos from the exact same height underwater each time they visit. These photos are used to track changes in growth between species competing for space on the boulder surface. Corallines can be near impossible to tell apart. So when they visit, they'll also chisel off samples of the different species to send away for DNA sequencing. DNA samples have already revealed that urchin barrens tend to be dominated by only a few species of corallines, and their diversity is much higher in kelp forests. This sort of research requires patience as these species only grow a few millimeters every month. But in time, Brenton hopes to inform strategies to limit the positive feedback of urchin recruitment and just maybe reestablish healthy kelp forest communities once again.